<laughs> so fake it until you make it. What does fake it until you make it mean? Well, sometimes in life, we, not well, sometimes, in fact, many times, many occasions, we don't start where we want to be. Uh, we don't end up magically at a particular point where we're very comfortable. And as a result of that, we have to work our way up to get there. You might not be the brightest cookie in the jar, but you can fake it until you make it. Fake it until you start believing that you are the brightest cookie in the jar. And sometimes you have to condition your mind to believing something. I don't know if you've ever tell a lie so many times that you really can distinguish the truth from what a lie is or the lie. But that is what we have to do to ourselves. Our brain works in such a way that the more we tell ourselves something, the more we believe it. So when I say fake it until you make it, I mean position yourself, tell yourself day after day, I will succeed. I will pass, I will do well, I will go on to have a bright future, I am good looking. Or anything, anything you want, fake it until you make it. Yes, so yeah, fake it until you make it. And you might be surprised to see how much you're able to achieve by just faking things. Uh, once I had a conversation with a young lady I thought I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And I felt as though my energy, my spirit was being dragged out of me. She was pulling, sucking my my energy. And that's what happens when you put yourself in a situation where you communicate with people that don't add to your value and people that only pull away from you. Uh, what am I saying there? I'm saying sometimes we have to surround ourselves with people who are going to take us places, people who are going to add to our, our worth, people who are going to add to our values, and not only persons who are going to pull away from you. Uh, sometimes your friends would be saying, uh, you can't do that. You can get grade one in English. Okay, <laughs> we'll see about that. And people who are not going to encourage you, those are not people you want to be around you. When you're faking it, you don't want people to be around you that don't believe in, in you. And even if they don't believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. So. That is your opportunity to let them go and start away on your own. Good. So that's my little TED talk for tonight. Let's go into continuing our... Any questions on that? Any, any follow-up on my TED talk? So I find that is a powerful speech. Preach. <laughs> you, you haven't seen me preach yet. <laughs> <laughs> Any follow up? Any questions? Anything y'all? Y'all sure y'all want to ask anything? I'm sure somebody would have a follow up. Juanita, you're here. Good night. How are you doing? Tanish, you're on. Oh, finally, Tixie got through. Keandra, you're with us tonight. You're feeling better? Good night. Yes, I am. I'm doing better. Good, good, good. 
Yeah. Okay, so tonight we are going to talk about antonyms and synonyms. And I don't know why I'm using antonyms because CXC lays it out for you nicely and tells you it's the opposite. But you still have to know the word antonym because can go in, you can go into the exam and you can see the word antonym and you'd be like, what's an antonym again? When I was writing exams many years ago, they just used to say antonyms on top of the paper and you have to know what you have to do there. Uh, then they are synonyms, but now they even give you nice description shoes, the word opposite in meaning, and still people get these things wrong. So let's look at it. I'm going to give you a simple way of remembering it. Let me get my marker. Everybody's hearing me well? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. So we see here S for synonym, S for similar. So if you ever wanted to find out what that is, S for synonym, S for similar. So it's a word that is similar in meaning or a word that is very much the same as another word, right? And if I, if I have to give a definition, a modern definition for the word synonym, I will say it's a word we use when we can't spell another word. You agree? Yes, yes sir. Yes. I want to tell the girl, she looks beautiful today. But you can't spell beautiful, so you can write nice. You look nice. <laughs> Them boys would know what they're talking about. Hopefully you can spell beautiful, though. It's not that difficult. And if you get a boy who can, anyway, let's not continue on that long, on that road at all. Yes, yeah, so we have here antonyms, which are the opposite. So if synonyms have S and, and, and um, similar in meaning, Antonyms, of course, you can distinguish between the other one that is available. So if it's not a synonym, then it must be an antonym. So opposite in meaning. So a word opposite in meaning to another word. That is a simple definition that you have to, to grab in your head. So let's look through this list here and try to have a working list of antonyms based on what is here. I'll give you the sentence just to start our discussion on this, and then we will go through with the list. Yeah. So I have a sentence here. The uninhabited house was old, broken, and creepy. If I were to ask you, based on that sentence, can you tell me the meaning of the word uninhabited? What might you say? Anyone? It's not occupied by anyone. Abandoned. Yes. Yeah, so you probably would have known that before. But the point I'm making is in these sentences where you have a word that seems to be a big word and you don't know what that word means, you have to look at how the word is used in the sentence to try to decipher the meaning of that word, to try to break that word up so you can understand what it's saying. So the sentence says the uninhabited house. So this is something about his house. We know something about a house we were talking about. And this house seems to be old, broken, and creepy. If this house is old, broken, and creepy, something indicates or should indicate to you that, hey, maybe somebody's not in the house. So I'm trying to show you that we can oftentimes get to the meaning of a word that is in a sentence by just reading and understanding that sentence that it is in. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Yes. So let's go through this list and you will give me as, as many as you can 
antonyms to the words here, antonyms, right? Remember, sometimes we have to keep reminding ourselves what we are doing, antonyms, because halfway through the list, you will see people will give me synonyms, right? So I'm saying that to tell you, when you're in the exam, when you're in the exam, you will have problems where you will forget halfway through the list or uh, halfway through the sentences that you're looking for antonyms and you end up choosing a synonym not because you don't know but because you just forgot what you're doing so whenever you see a question like this on the line um, opposite hmm, highlight it i think your your exams are going to be done on computers this year i don't know how i feel about that but Highlight it. I'm sure they have highlighting features. So ask me how it's going to be done. I don't know. I don't have any shares at CXE. I really don't know. You and I are probably on the same page. We are clueless. We are just prepared for the CXE exam that only CXE know about. As far as we are concerned, all we can guess is that there will be 60 multiple choice questions. That's all we can guess. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, CX is a very lazy institution. They are not going to create new multiple choice questions. They are going to be questions that were done before. So just take that as a go and pay attention when we do the question. So when they come back, you'll do well. Good. So angry. Let's have some opposites in meaning. Cardial. Pardon? Cardial. Cardial, okay. Anyone else? Calm. Calm? Yes, sir. Okay. Happy. Peaceful. Happy. Happy. Okay. Peaceful. Peaceful, yes. Uh huh. Anything else? Please. Relaxed. Relaxed. Any more? That's it? Carefree. Carefree. Yeah. That's it. Might be a bit far fetched. Yeah. Somebody's not angry. Humble. Humble. Mm, okay. Approximate, opposite to approximate. Looking for one word in particular. Precisely. Close. Uh huh. Sorry. Estimate. Precisely. Say. See that? See that? We just had an error there. We're looking for. Oh. Right. Somebody give. Oh, opposite. Precisely. Yeah, five, five, five. Yeah, that is Precisely. what I was talking about. You have to keep reminding yourself what the words are or what the sentences are you're supposed to form, right? So approximate, the synonym would be close, but the opposite would far. be far. Far, okay, what else? Far is something like distance, but what, what distance, else? Distance, yeah. One word I'm looking for in particular. Precisely. I've heard that, Juanita. I've acknowledged you, but that's not what I'm looking for in particular. Precise, yes, it will be definite, but I want another word which is a synonym of precise. Exact. Yes, exact. Exact. So if it's not a, approximate means we are rounding it off. It's there about, it's about that, right? And if it's not about that, it's gonna be exactly that. So if something is dangerously, the opposite of dangerous would be what? One word, major word. Safe. Safe, yes, safe. And if something is definite, it means what? Give me a synonym. I'll read you synonyms later. What would the opposite be, definite?